Dear colleagues, I am Dominic Benz from the University Hospital Zurich, and I would like to give you a very short insight into our research on how myocardial flow reserve from PET adds prognostic value and modifies treatment response in patients with ischemic heart failure. We performed a retrospective analysis of a single center cohort of 254 patients that underwent combined ischemia and viability testing by PET. Over a median follow-up of 3.3 years, 67% of patients experienced MACE. Cardiac risk increased significantly with lowering of myocardial flow reserve with an annualized MACE rate of 14% if flow reserve was 1.7 or higher, 22% if flow reserve was between 1.2 and 1.6, and 33% if flow reserve was below 1.2. In multivariate modeling, the addition of ischemia, scar, and hibernating myocardium to a clinical model did not improve outcome prediction. In contrast, adding myocardial flow reserve incrementally and independently improved risk stratification. To test whether this improved risk stratification results in a better patient management, we stratified patients by treatment strategy. That means medical therapy, early PCI, early cabbage, and categorized them into those with high and those with low myocardial flow reserve. After adjusting for all clinical and imaging covariates, there was a significant interaction between treatment strategy and myocardial flow reserve. Interestingly, in patients with high myocardial flow reserve, as illustrated in the lower left corner, no differences in MACE were seen regardless of which treatment strategy was pursued. In contrast, in patients with low myocardial flow reserve, as illustrated in the lower right corner, those patients who underwent early cabbage had significantly lower MACE rates than those who underwent early PCI or were treated medically. In conclusion, PET-derived myocardial flow reserve improves risk certification and could assist in clinical decision-making by identifying those patients who benefit from cabbage. Thank you for your attention.